I'm doing a dopamine detox for seven days. Yum, fire. But is there a real need to detox dopamine? What does that even entail? Go on a run? Get dopamine. Eat chocolate? Get dopamine. Play video games? Get dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that gets us to seek pleasure outside of ourselves. And it's one of the happiness hormones. I get a lot of dopamine. Now here's the thing though, dopamine is not bad, but too much distraction can be. Dopamine usually has two aspects at play. One is the intensity of the hit, and the second is the duration of the release. Now get this, after you have a dopamine release, you have a new lower baseline. So excess stimuli is training you to have a higher requirement to receive pleasure. Because of this unique feature of dopamine, some ways of dopamine release are sustainable and others not so much. For me, the biggest cause of distraction, yet pleasurable addiction, comes from my phone. Dun dun dun. I usually like to say to myself that my phone connects me to you, a positive narrative. But the truth is, my work connects me to you. My usual routine on my phone is Instagram, YouTube analytics, and email. Sometimes if my phone is in sight, I can be stuck in this loop every 10 minutes. Waste of time. Now for those of you saying, well, put your phone in another room, Shin. Yes, I've tried that, and that has taken my screen time down from 4.5 hours to 3 hours, which is great, success, but it's not where I want to be. I still have this unsustainable dopamine craving system. Now, according to James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits, your environment impacts your habits more than anything else. So, I changed my environment. We're, we're on the way, we're going up north, and we're going to reestablish some good habits and I'm looking forward to disconnecting. Since I'm going to a smaller place away from the city, I'll also be curbing my daily pleasures such as workout variety or other screen time such as gaming. The first order of business was to delete my Instagram and YouTube analytics app so that I would not be able to access it even if I did succumb to my craving. I'll be keeping my phone in another room, checking my email twice a day, and working on my laptop for focused work. The longer nature walks and runs were rejuvenating. Sometimes I like to listen to music on my runs, but again, that increases the criteria required for a good run. So just the sounds of nature. There are a lot of hills here, so cover that with snow, rain, and ice, and it's begging you to be present and focused. I also noticed that I slept better throughout the week. High sleep scores all around. Oh, oh. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if this is a secret or not, but I get a great amount of pleasure from talking. I mean, I literally get paid to speak for a living, right? So I love to talk. So because I was missing this daily pleasure, I noticed myself tuning into my thoughts more. Here is the best way that I can describe it in a metaphor. With an overflow of dopamine, it feels like listening to the radio with a whole bunch of static and noise from other channels. But with a controlled dopamine release, I chose what to focus on. I selected one station and that noise turned into meaningful soundscapes. I'm not sure if I got a lot of work done, but the work I did do was of better quality. I had more time to think things through instead of being distracted with a variety of stimuli. Even if you look at this book, which you could say is consumption of content, but it's still a continuation of thought and it's singular in focus, unlike social media, which is a vomit of variety. Mm. I also spent majority of the week barefaced, which was a treat because it removed that pleasure and also the time required. This was a really interesting turn of events. What I noticed by midweek is that instead of craving my phone, I started craving chocolate. 
So it was like my mind subconsciously substituted chocolate for my phone. It's like, how else can I seek pleasure? Ah, oh, we have chocolate. Eight mini bars. We ate it all. So consciously, I started to substitute chocolate for decaf tea. The one thing I could have done differently is to have made my diet simpler to reduce the food novelty, um, especially by removing chocolate. Here was my rationalization for keeping chocolate in, which could totally be an excuse, but hear me out. So according to Andrew Huberman from Huberman Lab, if you remove all of your pleasures, all of the dopamine releasing events from your day, then you're naturally going to feel low. You're gonna have a lower mood. Um, Cause remember, dopamine is associated with happiness. I didn't want to have a negative experience from this dopamine detox because then I would have less incentive to want to do it again. My screen time post detox averages around 30 to 75 minutes per day. Overall, this dopamine detox was a 10 out of 10. I would 100% do it again. So yeah, I like to say I'm addicted to not being addicted <laughs> with a mouthful of chocolate. Anyways, <laughs> that's it from me. So enjoy exercising your mind.